I do want to start though, and it would be remiss of me not to recognise that today is in many ways for many Victorians a day of remembrance. It is um, today in 2009 that uh, we here in Victoria lost 173 people on that day and I flagged to you many others have lost their life since then that are directly associated with that light, with that fire having taken their own life or uh, injuries as a, as a result. Um, I, I've deliberately put some slides up here um, to remind us of that day as a, as a reminder that there was 173 people killed on the day. Over 400 people were injured on that day, over 2,000 homes were destroyed and if you're in fi into figures, over 4,500 uh, 4, square kilometres of ground, if you like, uh, was burnt on that particular day. What people do forget, I think, at times like this is that there were 350 people, or people, Victorians, people, loved ones, if you like, that died um, preceding just before the fires as a result of the heat wave. And I say that in the context that people were in the middle of a heat wave. Victorians are currently dying at the moment because of heat waves. And I ask you, and I'll say, and I'll reinforce this at the end, to think about that with your loved ones um, now. Are, you, are your family well? Are they hydrated? Are they safe from the heat, which is just as much of a killer in our environment as is the fires? Where are we at the moment? So the first bit of this presentation I want to go through is what's actually happening in the state at the moment. We have 11 going fires. Um, there are parks that are closed to the public as we speak. For safety purposes, many of the parks are either completely closed or partially closed across the state are going on. Um, basically, at the moment, we have 384 deputy people, 80 CFA and 75 as we speak at the moment, people on the, on the fires, and 11 tankers, 23 dozers, 135 slip-ons and 24 aircraft. Many of the fires, and I'll go through some of those at the moment, that are currently going are in inaccessible area that is in almost remote country. So up in the Mallee at the moment, we've got 109,000 hectare, which is a pretty big, bloody big fire, if you don't mind me saying, uh, in, uh, up in that northern part of the, the state. Interesting enough, those fires have been going for some time, and we've pretty well tracked those. And we can give you some more details on those as we go through. So th they're, they're well tracked. If you have a look a bit further south, you've got the Grampians fire. High impact, causes a lot of concern. Probably the first time in Victoria we've actually done an evacuation order into that particular community, into Halls Gap, where we actually evacuated. In fact, I'd go further and say it's probably the first time we've done it in Australia, that we've actually pulled that trigger on evacuation. And we did that in the Grampians. And again, that's 55 hectares. There's still some hot spots in there, but interesting enough, the Grampians, I think, have got a folk festival or a jazz festival or some sort of festival on this weekend. So we're trying to balance this, uh, this um, approach where they're open for business in Grampians. We don't want them to go bust against making sure that everybody's safe. So we're saying now it's safe, it's happy to return to the Grampians, but we're keeping a watchful eye on it. We have got crews there. We are continuing to patrol both those fires. This is where the problem is, people, um, and the problem that sits here for us at the moment. And you see that it's all pretty well focused in one part of the state, that far eastern part of the state. What happened uh, a while, in fact, we've had two lots of lightning go through this particular area, which is fantastic. It goes through usually on the change at about five o'clock. Lightning happens everywhere. If we get a chance, we put aircraft up. But effectively, it has that that nighttime opportunity to burn before we can get an aircraft up over it early in the morning to have a look to see what smoke's actually started. So we go up the next day, oh my goodness, there's another smoke sighting. We need to get onto it really, really quickly. So what we'll do is we'll send our, our uh, Victorian remote firefighters in, the New Zealanders, the New South Wales, we get the helicopters, we walk them in and, and down they go where it's safe and we get them to cut in a line where they can. Most of these fires, and I want to go through the three complexes, and you can see yourself, you don't have to be a firefighter to see what the concern is. There are three major complexes at the moment. The problem is them joining up. If these fires start to slowly all join up, we start to move into um, campaign type firefighting. We're almost there now, and with what's about to occur on the weekend, we suspect that that's the environment we're about to work, work into. So let's have a look at the three complexes. I want to draw your attention to the Snowy River Cluster, the Goongra Cluster, and the Club Terrace Cluster. And interesting enough, we've now got two new fires that have just started. Only small, Davies Plain Kings Plain Track, only five hectares, and Chandler's Creek tra uh, tra Creek uh, fire, which is only 23 hectares. 
In their own, they say, well, they're only pretty small. They're pretty, they're inaccessible. We can't get to them at the moment and they will cause us concern. Potential concern for us are new fires that have just come up yesterday on the horizon when lightning went through. So let's go through, Lauren, if we would, and have a look at the Snowy River Cluster. And again, from a proximity point of view, here's your Goongra Cluster, not that far away. But in the, in the, snowy, uh, the snowy River Cluster, we've got two main fires there, the Goongra, uh, Dedic Trail and the Mount Galambity. Now, Galantope. Now, Goonga, of course, is a community. These poor buggers have got fires all around them and they've had warnings and advice, advices and uh, warnings and alerts, etc. So they'd be quite on tender hooks and they've been having those alerts now for quite some time. You can see for yourself now significant fire activity in this area, spotting up to half a kilometre north, uh, north of this fire. The, um, they're still talking about closing roads, they're talking about heavy, heavy heli, heli tax, etc. Et but 75% uh, of the perimeter is still actively spreading on the, uh, on the Goongra fire and the three spot fires 50, uh, of 50 hectares, pretty big spot fires. You know, again, don't have to be a firefighter to understand these fires, as we go into a bad weekend, are currently causing us concern and will continue to cause us concern over the next few days. So that's what's happening in Victoria as we speak. I want to move from that environment to what's about to occur. Okay, and keeping in mind really the time of year that we're in. So what we do is that we get some uh, forecasts. So this is for today. So you can see the fire conditions across Victoria today are uh, very high, right across the state. And that's predicated on what we see here is the, the forest danger index and the gra grass fire danger index. So today itself is, is, a, is not a good day. If we move forward to Saturday, we see some severes moving into the southwest part of the state and the rest of the state on very high. So we've got on Saturday 38 degrees up to uh, 43 degrees, in anyone's language, bloody hot. Uh, humidity's down, um, and so, so we're pretty well hot right across the state in, in this scenario. Um, the interesting thing for you, and, and the reason I wanted to mention the heat wave stuff, is Saturday night there is no change coming through. It will be 30 degrees plus all through the night on Saturday night. And again, I, I ask you to, to take care of your loved ones from a more parochial fire point of view. What that means is the, it, it, it sucks the bejesus or the, the, the dryness out of the soil. Everything is, is absolutely dry. And ha we've had hot weather leading in, but this weekend we get hot today, we get hot tomorrow, and overnight Saturday night it remains stinking hot and dry. So any moisture you have in fine fuels, in heavy fuels, in forests, in grassland, gone. The fuels are all 100% cured, so which effectively means that all, all the moisture is gone out. So we've look, we, we have uh, Dave and his team look at the fuel moisture content right across the state. It's gone, empty. It's 100%, scientifically shown, 100%. It is ready to go. So we've gone on Sunday is, is the concern for us. So you need to understand the leading up. So we've had some really hot weather reading up. We've got a really hot day today, really hot day uh, Saturday. We expect fires will run Saturday night. So we've all, and keep in mind, we already have going uncontrolled fires in this part of the state, which is a concern for us. So you can just imagine those fires with crews on them, stinking hot, wind gets up behind them, why they're going to be a problem for those particular communities, that particular area of the state. The other thing to point in, it's probably the first time, I, I don't want to use a, a, a benchmark that we always do, but let's just say for a couple of years, for a number of years, that we've actually gone into extreme in some parts of the state. It, it, it is the first time for some time, for some years we've actually gone into extreme. And if you have a look where we're going into extreme, given what we've currently got in the state at the moment, again, just reinforces our degree of almost anxiety, concern that we've got in this part of the state. So that's north of the divide. If you look south of it, we still have severe down here in central. Right? So even where we, we all live as well, it's not just, uh, it, it's, uh, it, it is right across the state is a concern for us. The other thing I want to put into the equation that you see on the map is the wind change. The biggest killer of, of people in Victoria is the change. Um, and that's, that's coming through pretty early Sunday morning. Again, pretty, pretty unprecedented. I don't even like that word, but it's not 
usual that we would have a wind change come through that early. It's unknown territory for us and we believe there's strong winds behind the wind change as well. So if you've got a fire that's burning, if you've got a fire, and we have, in this part of the state that's currently burning under a northerly, we can expect that it will burn all through Saturday night. We can expect on a wind change that thing will turn and head towards the east. Now there's a big ocean between us and, I think it's a sea between, between us and New Zealand that hopefully will will we'll stop it if nobody else can, but there's a lot of stuff in the way before it actually gets to that point. So that's our concern for, uh, for us moving forward. I, I want to also reinforce, so I've talked about fire predominantly and our concerns for fire. So that's, we've concerns about what we've got existing, but we're also concerned about any new starts we get across the state. I can tell you the chief has already declared, and it's probably a no-brainer, a total fire ban all day tomorrow for the whole state, all day. Of course it is. Um, and a total ban for the whole state on Sunday as well. So the weekend is a total fire ban for the, the entire state. And I think you can understand why that, why that is. So it's fire is an issue to us. But the other thing is this heat wave conditions that we have here in Victoria. And again, it's not just something we make up, read on the news, etc. We work with the Bureau of Meteorology. We are in heat wave alert and the, the Health, Department of Health are putting out heat warnings as well for loved ones, families, etc. And I talk about animals, pets, uh, elderly, young, um, you've heard the stuff about leaving kids in the car. I would urge you as a message that it is not just about fire, it is about all Victorians and your loved ones during a time of heat and make sure that we hydrate. So the key messages. Key messages for me, there are severe and extreme heat and fire conditions across the state over the next few days. And I say that in a context we've got current fires and we can expect to get new fire starts. Any fires in the, the landscape on Saturday and Sunday will quickly become uncontrollable. And I say that in an environment where we're already instructing our people, it is unlikely in these conditions we'll be able to stop these fires. It will be about protecting people, which is the primacy of life is our number one uh, objective here, and that is of the community and of course our firefighters. Um, we, we understand that we will try and hit them as quickly and as hard as possible with the amount of aircraft, with trucks and everything we can to stop them getting big uh, so obviously we can get them early, we stop them getting into big fires, but that's not always possible. But our first priority here is safety, okay, so it's the safety of our people. We will not compromise our people um, uh, in any way, shape or form. So if it means we're not going to do a direct attack to save our people, and some people don't like it, we're not doing a direct attack. The safety of our people will be paramount this, this weekend. We reinforce what was just being said, the primacy of life. And the Royal Commission was very strong on that to say CFA, fire agencies, understand when conditions get so bad, it's actually not about putting out fires. It's about ensuring communities are warned, ensuring communities know what they have to do. And uh, Terry and his team pretty well work full time on making sure communities are empowered and understanding and know what to do on a, time, a, 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 a day of uh, a, a weekend that we're coming up to. The importance of wish, uh, issuing warnings, the importance of hydrating, and I even say that in our offices. If you're working within this building and you step outside, etc., you can hydrate, uh, dehydrate just in the air conditioning that we have within the building or in the environment that we go. So make sure you hydrate, and not just with water. If you get access to electrolytes, then you should be using them. We say, uh, be mindful of fatigue, but the, rea the reality is, um, Fatigue does step in, not just for firefighters, but for management people, for people here in headquarters. So as much as this is a message for our people on the ground, it's a message for the organisation as well. We've as I said before, we're going to, our intent is to hit uh, fires hard and fast. With as many, we've got wolf, what we call wolf packs, sounds a bit wanky, but two or three aircraft that will automatically lift off and dump uh, sometimes before firefighter tr trucks can get on scene. We, we've got a deliberate attempt to put fires out quickly this year. Uh, ahead of the wind change, concentrate on the eastern flank. Now, it's a bit of a technical term if you like, but if you, if you understand, I said before I haven't got the map up anymore, the fires head in the northerly direction and on the change they head towards the east. We have to, as firefighters, we have to shore up that eastern flank before that change comes to stop the damage. And we have to get our firefighters off that eastern flank at least an hour before the change and therefore it is exposed. So there is a time when we do that. Aircraft may not be available. Many people forget that in 2009, and I said I wouldn't benchmark it against that, but we, we could not get aircraft up because of the wind. The heavy aircraft, the, what we call the Type 1s, the Ericsson's, the, uh, what would you, the, the Elvis type aircraft, we can get up. 
Anything below that on a heavy wind, you can't get up. So people plan as we tell our firefighters, plan as if you don't have aircraft there available, which they do 90% of the time. And we factor that in. All grasslands are fully cured. I talked to you about that before. Um, fires will burn actively over Saturday night, which is unprecedented and not, not necessarily normal, and will burn into Sunday as well, with a change coming in strongly on Sunday. The resources you have are the ones all you've got, and I say that in a context, normally what we'd have is the Gippsland fires, and the whole state would direct their energy into Gippsland. At the moment, we've got fires in the far west and the far east. We couldn't be more, further apart if we, if we tried. Uh, we get something in the middle, we're starting to stretch resources. So we're saying to our people, plan as if the resources you have today are the same resource you got. You can't guarantee the cavalry will come over the hill. Fight the fire you've got, be guided by the state pro uh, priorities, and they are simply the preservation of life, uh, community information and warnings, critical infrastructure is our third priority, uh, residential prop property is our fourth, protecting assets, supporting livelihood, and protecting economic and conservation needs. Now, probably not a detail you need to know, but understand we've got a priority. When we make a decision, life is number one. It's interesting, your residential house properties, number four. Look, I, I just want to impress upon you, we, it is this time of year, it is probably, some would argue, normal business for us. Understand that we're in normal business, understand what we're going on at the moment, understand what we're about to go into the next two or three days. But I guess there's a third element of this, and that is that and I did say it at one stage, it's probably four or five weeks before we can say we can start to get out of jail. Is that politically correct? But I've said it. Um, before we can say we can actually um, move on to back into normal business, if you like.